We're learning more about the death of a 12 year old boy from Chula Vista who police say accidentally shot himself over the weekend. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee. Police now say the gun was brought into the boy's home by a 15 year old friend. As News 8's David Gofferson reports, where that gun came from remains under investigation. He's just always laughing and constantly making everybody around him feel comfortable. As the parents and four sisters of 12 year old Max Mendoza continue to mourn his loss, we are learning more about how the boy was able to obtain a loaded gun. Chula Vista police say the gun was brought into the home by a 15 year old friend of the boy who was sleeping over at the family's condo on Telegraph Canyon Road. The 12 year old victim gained access to the gun and accidentally shot himself. Exactly where the teenage friend got the gun remains under investigation, but it's a tragic reminder to parents to keep your guns locked up. A, a person can be subject to a fine of up to $10,000 and imprisonment of as long as three years. San Diego attorney and legal analyst Dan Eaton says when a child is given access to a gun resulting in great bodily injury or death, the crime is a felony called criminal storage of a firearm in the first degree. It's not just parents, it's any adult. If you have a firearm in your home and it is likely or reasonably likely that a child is going to have access to that firearm, lock it up. Because if you don't, potentially you could face criminal charges. And the gun does not even have to be loaded for criminal charges to be brought. If it's an unloaded firearm that's not kept in a, a lock container or a secure location, and the miner gets it and loads it himself or herself and causes uh, great uh, bodily harm or death, uh, the criminal uh, responsibility is going to be the same. Max had just graduated from Rogers Elementary School and was set to attend Hilltop Middle School in the fall. Who goes home and thinks their 12 year old brother is gone? Like he was only 12, you know, he had so much to live for. He still had his whole life ahead of him. Now, needless to say, that family is devastated. They have set up a Go, GoFundMe page, and we've posted a link at CBS8.com. Carlo? David, this is a, a tragic story. Nobody wants to hear about this, but as you reported, we, we still don't know where that gun came from. Are there any indications it was from that teenager's own home, or could that gun have come from someplace else? Uh, either one, uh, the police are still investigating uh, where that gun came from. But I'll tell you, if any adult is responsible for giving that boy access to that weapon, that adult can be charged with a felony and the maximum penalty, three years in prison. Such a tragedy and a preventable one at that. David Goffertson reporting live. Thanks, David. <laughs> Breaking news right now from National City. Police there are investigating a possible stabbing death. This is in the 1700 block of Lenoaton Avenue. This is just south of 16th Street and east of the 805. Witnesses at the scene say one female stabbed another female to death. Police have not yet confirmed this. The ages of the two involved also not clear at this point. We're keeping an eye on the situation and we're going to bring you more information as we get it into our newsroom and onto our digital platforms. The Coronado Unified School District has voted unanimously to appeal the CIF's decision to strip the high school there of its championship title. This comes after that controversial tortilla throwing scandal following a championship game against a predominantly Latino school, Orange Glen, last month. Coronado High was also banned from hosting postseason games for two years, and the CIF is calling for racial sensitivity training. A Coronado alumnus who brought the tortillas claims it wasn't a racist act and that it used to be a tradition at UC Santa Barbara basketball games before being banned. As July 4th came and went, people who live in Mission Beach were left with piles of trash and overflowing cans, which is making the severe fly problem even worse. But starting this week, the city of San Diego is adding a second weekly trash and recycling pickup for Mission Beach in hopes of curbing that pesky problem. News 8's Brian White has the details and reaction to this new hopeful solution. 
That's right, neighbors in Mission Beach have been begging for a second pickup, and starting this week, they get their wish. Trash and recycling trucks making their way through Mission Beach Tuesday morning, cleaning up the mess left behind from the holiday weekend. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of trash. Yeah, like the whole alley's covered in trash. It's crazy. There's been a lot of trash, especially in the alleyways. The excessive trash piles and overflowing cans contribute to the severe fly problem in the alleyways, something which residents and vacationers know all about. There's a pretty good amount of flies around, especially after a weekend like this. Like there's flies everywhere. During summer months, Mission Beach has traditionally seen an influx of out-of-town visitors, many staying in short-term rentals in the area, and the trash stacks up quickly. So we went up with open food and garbage. Marlon Whitfield and Cade Hilker are vacationing from Phoenix, and they can't seem to find any more room in their bins. We come out, we throw stuff away, and then yeah. there's just nowhere to put everything else. Or they need to put like a big dumpster around here or something, uh, because we need somewhere to throw it away. The recently approved budget for the city of San Diego is now funding additional trash and recycling pickups for Mission Beach starting this week. The additional pickup is usually funded for this area during summer months to help with the fly problem, but it was not covered in last year's budget, which made the situation worse. And the flies are, you know, they don't miss an opportunity. They're, they're all over. The new collection schedule for Mission Beach will include trash pickups every Tuesday and Saturday, and recyclables will be picked up every Tuesday rather than every other Tuesday like it was before. Clear up the trash in the alleys for sure. And when asked whether the additional pickups will curb the fly problem? Hopefully it does help because they are, they're pesky. Hopefully helps with all the, you know, the flies and everything and especially the, the stench of, you know, trash and all the rotting everything laying around everywhere. The new collection schedule for Mission Beach will run through Saturday, September 25th. Brian White for News 8. It has been nearly four months since the San Diego Unified School Board voted to change the name of Junipero Serra High School to Canyon Hills High School and the mascot from the Conquistadors to the Rattlers. Now, some want the district to pause the rebranding that is now in progress. This morning, a group called Preserve Serra High made their voices heard in Tirasana. There are 45,000 votes or residents in this community, and of those, you know, there's half of them are voting. But that, those are the ones that have the right and the opportunity to vote. Whatever the majority says, I'm good with it. In a statement, district officials said the community did have a chance to weigh in before the board voted in March. Students voted by paper ballot, and parents on the school's large alumni network, they were emailed their digital ballots. A man who stabbed a clerk to death inside an adult bookstore in the Midway District has pleaded guilty to murder. Sean Ward is expected to face life in prison without the possibility of parole when he's sentenced next month. 65-year-old Diane Spagnuolo was found dead inside the store back in October of 2018. Police say a surveillance camera captured Ward inside the store before the killing. Right now, a hurricane watch is in effect for parts of Florida's Gulf Coast as residents brace for now Hurricane Elsa to make landfall. Winds are peaking around 60 miles an hour right now, but forecasters say Elsa could be even stronger when it comes ashore tomorrow morning. Bo Zimmer is in Sarasota with the latest. Intense rain and strong winds battered Key West Tuesday as Elsa makes its way up the Gulf Coast. But the rough waters weren't enough to deter a few fishermen in the area. In addition to the wind and rain, there's concern about flooding and storm surge. Elsa is forecast to become a hurricane before making landfall, with landfall, landfall appearing most likely in the eastern Big Bend of Florida or Nature Coast north of Tampa Bay tomorrow morning. Governor Ron DeSantis told Floridians along the coast to get ready. It's important for Floridians to have weather alerts turned on on your phone, you're going to see impacts all across the West Coast, uh, up the West Coast into the morning hours. In Tampa, people filled sandbags ahead of the storm, while in Sarasota County, some couldn't resist the waves. Uh, What's the goal today? Get some good surf. Here in Sarasota County, people are closely watching the tide. When it comes in, it could bring with it a storm surge of up to three to five feet. The stormy conditions are also impacting the search and rescue efforts at the condo collapse in Surfside. The wind is hampering the uh, 
large cranes moving very heavy debris. At one point, lightning temporarily forced the search to stop. Officials say they have personnel from the Weather Service embedded with the rescue teams to stay on top of any changes that could impact the work. Bo Zimmer, CBS News, Sarasota County, Florida. Search teams have been fighting through the rain and wind in their search for more victims, finding four more bodies overnight. The death toll there now stands at 32. I'm Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis tracking Elsa, taking a look at the latest with this storm system. You can see the state of Florida is just completely lit up when it comes to watches and warnings. So there is still a tropical storm warning that is in play. You're seeing some of those outer bands now moving in towards the lower keys near Key West. Also, everything highlighted in yellow is a tornado watch because of those strong feeder bands producing some of those really strong thunderstorms. And the closest storm activity closest towards Elsa, just that center of circulation, is Sarasota. They're going to be hit with some really strong cells and that's going to be about 19 miles offshore. They're starting to lift into the area. Taking a look at the latest, Elsa did upgrade to a hurricane category one. Maximum sustained wind speeds are at 75 miles per hour. Elsa looks to make landfall by tomorrow morning, still maintaining that hurricane strength as a category one right along the bin, Big Bend area of the state of Florida before it does downgrade to a tropical storm and then potentially regenerating right along the eastern seaboard once it gets to a tropical depression, then yet again another tropical system.